Uh, Bronca te yahawo, Bronca te yahawo, shy. Bronca te yahawo, Bronca te yahawo, shy. Bronca te yahawo, Bronca te yahawo, shy. Oh, praise on te yahawo, shimi al shabal shimi al kakadash. Double nose on three apostles, a great millstone. And honest, you brothers, to be pushing this truth in sincerity throughout the four corners of the earth. So, this here is a quick video. I'm going to entitle this video The Heavenly Father uh, Never Forgets. And um, this is uh, with Esau. Okay, E boy, in um, in, 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 in with reference to E boy, the Edomites. Okay, the red Hebrew Edomites that rule the world right now, that arrogantly and proudly rule the world right now, and they're running it towards the greatest destruction that's ever appeared, that's ever been experienced on the entirety of the uh, in the entirety of uh, history, because they are the worst people, all right, that have ever existed in the position of rulership, and they are the worst people that's ever existed. Right, this is the lump that was made onto dishonor, and the twelve tribes of Israel, the Negroes, the Hispanics, and Native Americans were the tri uh, were the uh, um, were the lump that was was made unto honor. Esau was made unto dishonor. Jacob was made unto honor, and the more I created them, that they would so that they was going to be destroyed. All right, and I entitled this video "The Heavenly Father Will Never Forget," because here it is. All right, it's two thousand and nineteen, almost two thousand and twenty. All right. We've been in hardcore slavery underneath Esau. All right, right now it's the slave enslavement of your mind. And um, pretty much um, as far as Esau is concerned, they're thinking that they, they got the upper hand, man. They're thinking this is this is it. This is going to be the rulership that, they, that, that, that all the kingdoms before it uh, have always wanted, which is the rulership uh, as in to rule forever. All right, they're thinking that the Heavenly Father is not going to remember his elect. All right, that they're gonna be able to now the elites know that they're gonna be destroyed ultimately, but they think that they can. They, their pride deceives them. But the peons that you have out here, the the, the, the managers that you that, that's around you, the Edomite managers that you have around you, okay, the Edomite bosses that you have around you, their mindset is that they've got the upper hand over you. Okay, their mindset is that you are a Negro, Hispanic, Native American, and you will always be underneath them. And the Heavenly Father set it up to where this was gonna be the case right now. But through the upliftment of our people, through the word of Yahweh Shai, because you got all kind of different individuals out there, so-called, you got all kind of individuals out there that are that are saying they're they they so-called awakening the people. But the reality of the situation is that there is the the, the the spirit that quickeneth. The book of Saint John sixteen sixty three is the spirit that quickeneth, and the words that proceed from Yahweh Shai's mouth, they are spirit and they are life. Therefore. When we was going to push out the word, when I say we, I'm talking about the prophets that come in sincerity. Yahweh, I'll be a prophet, uh, one of the real prophets of the Heavenly Father. But the prophets of the Heavenly Father was going to be pushing out the word and they was going to be bringing the people to a state of being alive. OK, they was in a dead state pursuing to the book of Revelations 11 and, and, and 8. But the Heavenly Father uh, uh, has not forgotten us, man. All right, the Heavenly Father did not forget the 12 tribes of Israel and through the prophets being out there, he was going to wake up the nation of Israel and he was going to remember the iniquity of Edom and he was going to put them into chains and captivity and ultimately be destroyed. And that's going to be a good uh, scripture that I'm going to get. I believe it's within the book of uh, Lamentations, the fourth chapter. I'll get to that when I get to that. The book of Revelations 11 and 18 says, and their dead bodies. Whose dead bodies? The, the bodies of the Negroes, Hispanics, Native Americans, the Israelites. All of our children that are scattered amidst the nations, whether they look like the Chinese, whether they look like the Edomites, they was going to be in a dead state. That is to say they was going to be distant away from the truth, devoid of the spirit of the, 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 the Rukah and the Nafash of the Heavenly Father. And they was going to be in a dead state. Doth not the scriptures say, he that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. So we, we, we veered away from the uh, uh, understanding of who we was as a people. All right. You ask a Negro, Hispanic, Native American, you ask him, who are you as a person? Who are you as an individual walking through this time uh, and, and on, 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 on earth? Who are you? What's, what's your purpose? They're not going to know. You ask these elite banking families, they know that they're off the, they're off the children of, of, of Esau. They know that they're in rulership right now. You ask the Ishmaelites, they'll tell you about their history. All right. You ask the Moabites, they'll tell you about the, their history. The, 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 the peaks and the troughs of their history. But you ask a Negro, Hispanic, Native American, they think history started when they was transplanted out there into the, um, when they was uh, moved via what's known as the transatlantic slave trade and moved out there into the Americas. That's how, that's that's what the Negroes, Hispanics, Native Americans believe is the, the beginning of their history. 
But rather more, when the most I created the Negroes, Hispanics, Native Americans, he created a nation that was going to be a, a nation of kings and priests. That is to say, when you run a company, there is the people that are at the bottom that do the work. Right? It was known as the manual labor. And then you have the people that, especially when you were talking, dealing with Roman times, the people that was born to rule, they was of that lineage of being in the upper echelon of society. That's ultimately the Negroes, Hispanics, Native Americans. That's why the, the name even Israel means what it means. He, the prince with the power. The prince doesn't 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 sit on a, on a low level unless we're talking about the times that we're living in right, right now, or which the Mosai is going to turn it back to where it's supposed to be. But the prince ain't supposed to be in a lower state. And that same sentiment is mirrored within the book of Ecclesiastes, where with the scripture says, uh, uh, I have seen servants, uh, 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 um, sorry, I've seen servants sit upon horses. Because who's the servant? The red Hebrew Edomites that rule the world right now. All right. That, sitting, they, they, got the, they got the nice cars. They're the ones that live in the nice areas. They're the ones that are living it up and looking down upon us. And that's all going back onto the curses that the Heavenly Father put upon us, where if he was going to turn the whole thing upside down and put the servants, the least of the flock, the most despicable people within the face of the, within the, within the, within the face of the earth, he was going to put them up on top. And we know that the most despicable people that's ever existed, because look at the earth right now. You've got nuclear, uh, nuclear waste that's being dumped underneath the ground and somebody thinks that's a smart management of the earth. All right, you got a, 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 a toxicity in terms of social engineering. You got toxicity in terms of the food you're eating. You go into the history of the scriptures, you find out when a person was going to eat some food, they were supposed to be brought back to life. Here it is now. You eat like a McDonald's, which you ain't supposed to be eating that, but you eat that junk food that Esau be feeding you, especially you Negroes, Hispanics, Native Americans. You feel like you got a half life, man. You feel like you're you're half dead, man. Okay, because the, the, the food that we're eating right now is degenerated. The air that we're breathing is it, we're breathing is degenerated. Everything that every facet of life that Esau has had his hands on has been totally destroyed, man. You go into any uh, part of the world that has uh, hasn't had the, the hands of Esau on it, then it's gonna be the one of the most pristine, most beautiful places that you have ever ever seen. Like the Amazon before they found out that they could put Cows and and, and, and and take all the trees out there. That was a paradise. America was a paradise before Esau had his hands hands on it, man. The whole earth, the scripture says the most I put a guard, a garden eastward in Eden. All right. Eden was the, the earth. The whole entirety of the globe was Eden. And the, the garden that he chose was eastward in Eden, which if I'm not mistaken, correct me if I'm wrong. I believe that's the, actually the land of Israel. Now, correct me if I'm wrong on that, but I actually I believe the breakdown goes that the the the, 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 the garden eastward in Eden is actually the land of Israel. I'm going to show you that that the, the Israelites was always chosen to be within that particular land. That is to say, you know, the the the, the, the Adamites when they was on the earth, they was ruling within that particular land, right? And you had all the other people within the earth. But then, uh, through course of uh, uh, iniquity, we Came out of that land, then you had the, the, the you know, Noah and his three sons, and then, the, you know, the, the, the Canaanites were in that land, and then we took that land back up again. You go to where the Canaanites are trying to say that's their land. Well, actually, when you go into the, the, the biblical history, that's always, well, really, the earth is belongs unto the Israelites. The proof of that is within the book of 2nd Ezra, um, the 8th chapter on the 54th verse. I believe it's 8 and 54, where the scripture says, and after these, Adam also, whom thou hast made Lord over all the creatures, of him come we all, and also to the people whom thou hast chosen. Who's the people that has, 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 that was chosen? The Israelites. And it proceeds and it says, uh, 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 um, If uh, uh, of all things be made for our sakes, why do we not possess an inheritance? And the simple answer, which is going back onto this video, is that because we did, we did the iniquity, all right? We did iniquity in the eyes of the Heavenly Father, so he jacked us up and removed the um the prestige from us and he gave the prestige unto Esau but the Lord has not forgotten the iniquity of the Edomites man uh Revelations 11 and 8 and their dead body shall lie down in the street of the great city which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt where also our Lord was crucified and they of uh, they of people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three and a half days and shall not suffer them to the dead bodies to be put in graves. And that's the situation that we was in for the 350, 350 years of hardcore slavery. Nobody was coming out here to tell us we were the Israelites, right? The, through the spiritual intervention, the most I put it on a particular individuals to figure out this thing. And then they came out and, and they pushed the doctrine out there, man. And then now we was awakened. We was made alive. 
right? And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice and make merry over them and send gifts to one another because these true prophets tormented them that dwell upon the earth. And after three and a half days, the spirit of life from the most high entered in, in unto them. Meaning to say you wasn't going to have a, a black uh, a movement and then the people was just going to be awakened as a result of that. You wasn't going to have some, some arbitrary movement, okay, that was going to be led by Marcus Garvey or Bob Marley or any one of these diff different individuals that are risen up, okay, d d during the course of history and they was going to uplift the people. But rather, through the spiritual intervention of the Heavenly Father, the people was going to be, uh, 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 the nation was going to be rebuilt again because of the spirit of the Heavenly Father had to be with it, man. When you go into the book of Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, it even tells you, right, the Lord wasn't going to save us by no man, but it was going to be him that was going to save us, man, right, deliver us from this hell that we're, that we're catching in, that, that we're living in. Okay, to, to, to go back into the video, it says that, um, and after three days and a half, the spirit that most entered into onto them, right, and um, and they stood upon their feet, uh, they stood upon their feet, uh, uh, and a great and great fear fell upon them that saw. So when these people are seeing now, they're seeing Jake coming in and working together. Okay, Jake overlooking their so-called uh, 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 gripes that they have about one another, which Esau used them gripes to, to, to divide and conquer you Israelites, man. Use those. He used those little minor discrepancies that you have against each other, like a like a. You might have a contention with a brother. That's just a minor contention, and Esau used that. He weaponized all these little contentions for you to hate each other, man. That's what Esau has been able to do, and then using that, he's used that to divide and conquer you. All right, old old tactics that he's had from 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 from, from yesteryear. But the spirit, the heavenly Father, entered in unto us, and, they, and we stood upon our feet, and great fear fell upon brothers. Uh, great fear, fear, great fear fell upon the nations when they saw brothers coming together and working together in terms of this truth and the spirit of Yahweh to have this house, the house of the heavenly Father built, man. All right, which is the building, the building of the house of the heavenly Father is what every person that comes into this truth is a brick. That makes up the tabernacle of your house, right? the, 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 uh, the, the temple all right, uh, of this time. Um, let's go now into the, 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 the main bulk of the scriptures, which I might even end up going through these faster than the ones I've just been through. Um, but the book of Revelation, the 13th chapter, and the 8th verse, it says, um, and, and ninth verse, it says, If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. So the heavenly father ain't forgotten you, Esau. You led the Negroes, Hispanics, Native Americans to hardcore slavery? Well, guess what? What's going to happen to you? You was going to be led into hardcore captivity yourself, man. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. So what the saints are patient about, what they look forward to is the, the, um, the balancing of the scales, all right? The balancing of, of weights, all right? Of which the major balancement of, of, of weights that needs to be played out upon the earth is the, need, the, the retribution, the spiritual retribution, not the financial retribution. Not, 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 not fine, um, um, what's that word I like to use that um, El Ariala uses? The financial, um, uh, what's it, how does it go? Uh, uh, compensation, right? I forget how he says it. But uh, 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 we ain't looking to get the, 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 the financial rep reparations from Esau, man. All right? We're looking for the Heavenly Father to balance these scales out. Here's the proof of that. Uh, 2 Thessalonians 1 and 6. Seeing it is a righteous thing with the Heavenly Father to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. Has not this man troubled us, man? Right? Has not Edom troubled the nation of Israel? Have not all the nations upon the earth troubled the nation of Israel? They've troubled us, man. So the Most High is going to flip it right back on them and they're going to be in trouble themselves, man. All right? Um... Last scripture, uh, remember, remember, and then and if I put um, Edom, hopefully it's going to come up. Pretty sure it's in Lamentations, the fourth chapter. Pretty sure. Excuse me, brothers, my, my memory is not the best, but I'm working on it for reading and, and other stuff. Uh, let's read this one. This is good anyway. Um, the Lord hath accomplished his fury. 
No, that's not the one. Take a quick look. I'm pretty sure it's somewhere around here. Ah, right, here you go. Here we go. Here we go. Okay, here we go. Uh, Lamentations 4 and 21. Rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom, that dwelleth in the land of Uz. The cap shall also pass through unto thee. <laughs> Which when you read all of this, I might read this at the camp tomorrow. All right. When you read all of this, it's talking about the hell Jake was catching, man, being put into, you know, he just the, the whole hell he was going to be catching, man, slavery, all that. All right. But guess what? The, the, the cup was going to pass on to you. The most I was going to remember you. But there's one that says it and, and it says the word remember in there. But this is all right anyway. It says, the right, Rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom, that dwelleth in the land of Uz. The cap shall also pass unto thee. Thou shalt be drunken, and thou shalt make thyself naked. The punishment of thy iniquity is accomplished of Dora of Zion, which is the Israelites. He will no more carry thee into the captivity. He will visit thine iniquity, O daughter of Edom. He will discover thy sins. So what's that dealing with? That's dealing with what? The passing of the cup, the passing of this in, this this hell that we, the Israelites, have been catching. That's going to be passed on to the, 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 the Edomites, man. All right, that the, the, the Edomites that rule the world right now, man. Okay, so I mean, that's the video, clear cut and simple. And hopefully, it was of edification. But I'm all that I'm gonna say, all praise unto Allah, Shimi Asha, Allah, Shimi Makaka, thus double honors unto the apostles of great millstone and honest you brothers that be pushing this truth in sincerity. Shalom.